Houston forecast for Sunday, June 30th to Saturday, July 6th. Okay, so last week we kind of got a little bit of chill out time, although none of us were chill. I mean that we came into the solstice energy moving into cancer season. We jumped right into that full moon in Capricorn that definitely shook up the structures and foundations of our lives. And then we got to sit in it. We got to sit in it all week. These particular energies are left kind of percolating, if you will, in order for us to look back on the past, because again, cancer season, very attached to the past, in order for us to bring a certain amount of closure to this present moment. Now, as I'm coming to you here Friday evening, if you're here in the live chat, thank you so much for being with me. But here on the 28th, we are just having the last quarter moon pop off in Aries energy. This is going to help us kind of reflect back over this last month, really put new perspective into some of the challenges that we have faced and some of the changing circumstances that we've been having to live through and put us in a situation where we're bossing up, where we're ripping the rear view mirror off. We're done at looking at the past. We're done trying to make sense of it. What we want to do is we want to be inspired and excited about life again. Is it going to happen overnight? No, probably not. However, the acceptance that we are coming to in order to actually bring a certain amount of closure into our realm is definitely happening. Whether it feels good or not, doesn't matter. It's happening. And we still have Saturn, the Lord of Karma, going retrograde here on the 29th. So we're not quite done yet with the events of this past week. And we are about to wrap up June in a major way by having Saturn, the Lord of Karma, go retrograde, smack dab in the middle of the two full moon in Capricorns that Saturn rules over. Okay, so what does that mean for this week? Well, we are jumping into July. We are going to have a brand new vibration to work with, which is really going to help and encourage and support us to find peace, harmony, compromise, balance within ourselves, within our lives once again. Sure, we've been shaken, not stirred. We've been shook up in some major ways. And July is going to give us the opportunity to slow things down, to gain our bearings, to find that peace, harmony, balance, and compromise within ourselves and within our ever-changing relationship dynamics in order for us to move on. That's what this is all about. So yes, we have July bringing in a totally different vibe, different energy for us to be working with. But we jump into July and we have Neptune and Mercury on the move on the same day. So on the second, we are going to have Neptune go retrograde at a 29th karmic critical crisis degree, mind you. And we have Mercury moving into Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So yeah, we are diving into July. We are moving within ourselves. We're recognizing where it is that we are being forced to deal with real life, even though we would rather curl up in a ball and just kind of wake up when a lot of this messiness is over. But Mercury moving into Leo energy, First of all, it's going to allow us to get our heart and our head back on the same page and in alignment. But that Leo energy being the heart and soul of the Zodiac, really returning us to our realest, most rawest, most authentic versions of self. We're definitely going to be seeing things from a totally different set of eyes, especially where new worth, new value, new passions, new desires, new creative solutions are concerned in order for us to pivot away from the old and for us to start building towards the new. But again, that pivot point isn't really taking place until the fifth when, of course, we're going to have our new moon in Cancer pop off at 14 degrees. So as I previously mentioned, the first part of Cancer season is very connected to the past. We're very much looking back. We're very reflective, very nostalgic when it comes to realizing what isn't working out, what it is that we have to close the door on, what it is that we have to bring an ending to in order for us to find ourselves in the present moment which for a very short amount of time we will find ourselves in around that new moon in Cancer. 
The minute that we detach from the past, that we find ourselves in the present moment, is the minute that, again, we reach that 14 degree under that new moon in Cancer. The minute we hit that 15 degree about I'm going to say a day later, that is when we start pivoting and start thinking about what we need to build in our lives, what we need to create in our lives to feel safe and secure and stable, not only in our physical realms, but nurturing and nourishing ourselves back to a place of safety, security, stability within our emotional realm. Cancer season, again, allowing the emotional waves to crash upon us to not only break us down, and make us a little bit more open and vulnerable to doing things in a different way, but also cleansing us, purifying us from the fragmented energies of the old soul contracts that we're no longer attached and connected to in order to cleanse and purify our soul and our spirit, renewing our soul and our spirit back to a place of happiness, of safety, security, so that we can move the F on. I say that because many of us are exhausted at this particular point in time. We are getting beat down by the emotional and karmic waves of the past. And we need to really, I'm going to say, invite in all the change that we could possibly invite into our lives at this point in time so that we can get the party started in a brand new path, in a brand new direction. So we got a lot going on this week. And of course, with all of those energetic shifts come a lot of ascension symptoms, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But I do want to take this time to kind of cross off a couple of things off of my list, starting with the thank yous. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank y'all for the love and support that you continue to show my way. But in reference to last week's rant, first of all, thank you all so much for piping up, for leaving comments to let me know how valuable these forecasts are to you. I did not go on that bitch on that rant last week uh, in, I'm going to say, in efforts to kind of get people to come forth and tell me how valuable it is. I also did not go on that rant to make people feel like they had to financially donate, you know, their generosity or whatever it is that they felt that they needed to donate towards me. I do want to clarify, first of all, it really did make a, a whole hell of a lot of difference to see how many people who I've never even seen comment on my channel actually come forth with their appreciation. I had no idea that I was positively influencing as many people as I was in the way that I obviously am. So to see that was very refreshing, very renewing, very validating, and I want to thank you for that. But my point of bitching about all of this stuff last week is the fact that, and I know I don't have any control over it, but YouTube is not my friend. And YouTube has essentially, you know, hidden my content away from the subscribers that want to see it. They go out of their way to remove comments off of my pages um, and off of my videos. And they have essentially taken close to $250 away from me um, over the last couple of months just due to limiting my content and therefore limiting the amount of ads that get seen on my page. Now, this is where things get a little bit trivial. There was a huge group of people, and I just, again, thank you all so much for the love, for the support, for the generosity, but there was a huge amount of people that reached out to me over this past week wanting to know how to donate, how to support my channel, how to support me. And although that is super, super amazing and awesome for all you do, for all of you to want to do, my point is, is that if YouTube would just stop messing with me, if they would just allow my content to be seen, YouTube could be paying me and make up for the difference that, again, people feel the need to jump in and kind of bridge that gap. I think those of you that want to to donate to me financially. But my point is, is that if we could just get YouTube to play fairly and to not hide my content, I would be very happy to accumulate whatever it is that I accumulate through the ads being seen on my content. YouTube should be paying me, not you guys. 
However, there is a, a very large amount of people that did not care about what I wanted to see happen, which is again, just allow YouTube to pay me for the ads being kind of viewed on my content. And so what I will say is for those of you that feel the need to financially, you know, donate or help this channel or just help me or to show some love in that way, please just know, first of all, it's greatly appreciated, 100% not needed, not expected. But if you feel the need, please visit my website. There is a donate button at the top of my website that will allow you to give in whichever way you feel the need to give. Again, I am not asking for financial support. It is greatly appreciated, but if YouTube would just do what YouTube is supposed to do, I would be very happy to just get paid by YouTube. But I wanted to have a little bit of a chat about this because the overwhelming love and support that came out of my little rant last week was overwhelming. But I just wanted to clarify that in no way am I asking for financial support from my viewers. What I just truly want in my heart space is for YouTube to stop being such a bully and to just allow my content to be seen by the people that have requested to actually see it. I have like 5,400 subscribers and my content maybe gets seen by 800 people a day. It does not make sense. I was used to having, you know, around 2,000 people viewing my content each and every single day. And literally over the last two months, it has gone down to 800 views per day. And I know that it's not your guys' problem. I get it. I just feel like, you know, as a content creator, I know there are many content creators um, that subscribe to my channel as well. I know we're all going through it. I know there's nothing that we can really do about it, but I just feel the need to talk about the back end of what it's like to be a content creator and to absolutely just be cast away and cast aside by YouTube. It is not fair. I'm hoping that it changes. I, I'm pretty sure that it has a lot to do with this new AI algorithm that they're trying to introduce and trying to filter out, you know, content creators using AI for the sole means of ripping off other people's content using an AI form in order for them to make money. So I get that there's a transitional period here um, and that there are bugs that are going to need to be worked out. However, I'm not the only content creator seeing this kind of restriction put on their channel and it is just super, super unfair. So I just wanted to bring some clarity to that particular topic and theme and just again, thank you all so much for the love, for the support, for the generosity. It is super overwhelming. I could not be more grateful and I am just super lucky to have this kind of love and support backing me while trying to fulfill my mission of trying to keep us ahead of these energetic shifts. Okay, so I'm going to put that behind me. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and thank you all so much for jumping over to Patreon, even as a free member, it really does help kind of build the channel over there. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, because July is just around the corner and you will see the July Zodiac forecast be available for download over the next couple of days, I just wanted to remind you that as of July 1st, as a free member on Patreon, you will be able to access the full episodes of June Zodiac Forecast that, again, is paid content for the Patreon VIPs. So, again, you can kind of tune into that, listen to it, see how your month went. And if it aligns and it gives you some clarity, maybe that would encourage you to actually purchase the July Zodiac Forecast in order to stay ahead of these energetic shifts. Either way... There are going to be some major changes to Patreon. Um, I got notification from Patreon that they're bringing in some different type of features that are very similar to YouTube, meaning uh, I've gotten word that we're going to be able to have a live chat on some of the videos that I post over there, which is going to open up a totally different channel for us to connect. So again, I do really recommend, I'm thankful for my YouTube community, but I do recommend that you jump over to Patreon because that is where the time, the energy, the attention is going from now on. Okay, so with the new month 
yes, the new Zodiac forecasts are coming. There's a calendar um, for July that you can download to stay ahead of the game. And of course, as we move into a new month, there's going to be a new focus on a new vibration, a new life lesson. And again, having the uh, cancer season e-guide available to you as we continue to move through cancer season and transition into Leo season, that's going to kind of help capture what is going on for you in your own individual life. And let me just say that these e-guides are super handy to be able to come back to, reflect upon in the months to come to see where it is that you're at. Again, uh, I'm specifically talking about Saturn right now. Saturn going retrograde is going to be a huge deal carrying us into the fall. You need to pay attention to what's going on in your life right now. Soul contracts, storylines, the endings, the closures, the beginnings, the challenges, the karma that is very much in your face at this particular juncture because we're going to have a totally different landscape, different foundation for us to be dealing with in the fall when we move through the equinox energy. We kind of move into the eclipse season again. And then again, we're at the mercy of the universe to sort us out and put us on the path that we failed to put ourselves upon. Again, just a reminder that all the resources that I put out there are to help you in the future. So invest in your futuristic self, do the work in the present moment here today and have this particular, let's call it journal or documentation to reflect back upon when we're really going through it in eclipse season in the fall. Okay, so that is the end of my rant of my rave. Let's talk about some of the ascension symptoms popping off this week. So first of all, I just want to kind of illuminate you to the fact that we are going to be moving through the moon energies from Aries energy to Leo energy. So we're starting the week off in a fire energy, Aries, and we're ending the week off in a fire energy, Leo. What's the difference between the two, you may ask? Okay, so Aries energy is a cardinal sign, so it's time to change. And in Aries energy, because it's very connected to the ego self, this is the new version of self coming out to play. This is the warrior type of mood and attitude that we need to kind of embrace and embody in order to boss up, rip that rear view mirror off and actually charge forward. So as the moon moves through the Aries energy, we're being kind of refreshed and renewed in our soul, in our spirit. We're going to move into the Taurus energy, which is slow. It stabilizes us. It puts a pause on things in order to figure out what we have to bring into form, what we have to build, what we have to create within ourselves in order for us to be prepared to take action to make moves. The moon is then going to move into Gemini energy again, giving us different information to work with, a different perspective to actually have a different, let's call it path or choice point to debate between. And then we're moving into the new moon in Cancer. So let me just be very, very clear. The new moon is the dark phase of the moon. There is no illumination of the moon in the sky. We have to sit in the darkness. We have to sit in the funk. We will see an upheaval of emotion, of circumstance, as we approach that new moon in Cancer, because the whole point of a new moon, the dark phase of the moon, is to be illuminated of what needs to end, what we can no longer deal with, what we no longer want to tolerate, what we no longer want to pour into. And from that, we use a framework on what it is that we would prefer instead. That essentially becomes the new moon intentions. There will be some version of the moon guide coming at you in the coming of days for this particular moon event. My voice, my health is going to dictate how that format is actually going to be. So to be determined. Nonetheless, we are going to go through that new moon in Cancer. It is going to be a rough one. It is going to feel dark. It's going to feel isolated. We're going to feel lonely. We are going to realize what it is that we have to do to nurture ourselves back to a place of health and wellness. And from that, we are going to have a realization on what it is that we need to be doing for ourselves, what we have to be building and creating in our lives in order to fill the voids the pain, the trauma wounds that are coming very much in our faces due to inner child wounds and mother wounds. What do I mean by that, you may ask? Okay, so cancer energy is the energy that we come from. 
the foundation of the family, the roots of the family that we are coming from. This is where generational trauma comes from. Similarly, because the moon rules over cancer energy, it is the mother energy. Capricorn energy sits across from cancer energy. That is the father energy. And so the mother role, just think of the fact that the mother is supposed to nurture. The mother is supposed to nourish that young child. But many of us have grown up in environments where there are strong mother wounds, which means that our inner child is still screaming for love, for attention, for nurturing, for nourishment, for acceptance, for stability. And so what the main lesson I think cancer season brings us is how we need to essentially become the people that we wished would come and save us as a child. So yes, there are many people walking around right now in full grown adult bodies with the absolute broken inner child dictating the choices, the decisions that they're making. Thus, why we find ourselves in toxic relationships, constantly looking for validation and acceptance and love and nurturing from all the wrong people. Our inner child wounds are being triggered and activated and mirrored back to us by the people that we choose to have close relationship dynamics with in order for us to realize where it is that we have to heal these wounds within ourselves. So that nurturing energy that we would expect the mother role to 100% give their offspring is a realization on where it is that guess, that, guess what? We need to be the child and the adult simultaneously. We have to recognize where it is that we're broken, where it is that we're hoping for someone to come save us and also be that healed version of the person that is going to save our damn selves. So there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack. And this is why the home and the family dynamic usually takes a hit through cancer season, why we get shook up in our foundation of who it is that we are and what it is that means the most to us and what it is that we actually value in our life. This is where we have to have the foundation of what we thought was going to happen, actually be shook up and totally just fall apart in order for us to build a brand new foundation for us to be operating from emotionally, immensely, and physically. Yes, there's a spiritual aspect there as well, but essentially because cancer energy is, you know, the fourth sign of the zodiac, we're still very connected to the ego avatar. We're still very connected to the physical vessel, the body in which we use to express our soul self. And the cancer energy is the first time in the zodiac wheel in the progression of building thyself that we actually start collecting people as assets in our lives. And that is what makes family and the family structure so pivotal to whether or not we are healed or whether or not we are wounded as adults. There's a connection there. And many of us are being triggered in some big ways right now in order to understand where it is that, again, we have to be both that healed version of self for that broken inner child. And we have to be the person that we wish would have been around to save us as that younger version of self. Now, cancer season is very emotional. Those emotional waves are crashing upon us, karmic in nature, because of course, Saturn is involved, um, meaning, you know, Capricorn energy sits across from Cancer energy. So we know that there's gonna be a full moon in Capricorn this time, this time around, we have two. Um, so Saturn is in direct opposition to the sun, the life force energy that is shining a bright light on our familial structure, on where it is that we're coming from, on what it is that we have to be doing and building and creating within ourselves, on boundaries. Okay, let's talk about boundaries for a second. How many people, raise of hands in the chat or drop a comment in the section below, how many people are having their boundaries tested? Okay, so here's the thing. Cancer dominant people, and I'm saying if you have your big three in cancer energy, you know what I'm talking about, but we're all collectively getting a taste of what it's like to have dominant cancer placements through cancer season. 
dominant cancer placements have issues with boundaries. They show up and they intertwine themselves with other people's lives so freaking tightly in order to distract themselves from doing the work within themselves. It's the whole, as long as you're needed, nobody is going to discard you type of vibe. Now the boundaries are being tested because boundaries are needed in order for us to protect ourselves. Boundaries are needed in order for us to know the parameters in which we have to build ourselves up in. In order to build a foundation of the house, you have to have a boundary of the property, of the structure in which you're building. Now the cancer energy requires us to have emotional boundaries to protect ourselves, but on the opposite side of the spectrum, the Capricorn energy needs us to have boundaries in order to build a structure in the physical realm that is going to allow us to reach our goals. Cancer energy is where we're coming from. Capricorn energy is where we want to go. And somewheres in between striking a balance between those particular energies, we have to have the emotional foundation stabilized within us before we can take action and make moves to progress ourselves on a path towards a goal, a vision, a dream that we want to achieve that the Capricorn energy holds in front of us. So in order for us to be able to build in the physical realm, we have to have a strong and stabilized inner realm. That's the work in which we're doing right now. The cancer energy has us totally disrupted in our emotional realm in order for us to weed away the things that are not important, the things that we no longer value, the things that are no longer supporting and encouraging the version of self that we need to be to fulfill the roles within our own soul contracts. It is a very tumultuous time. We are very exhausted. Emotional energy is more exhausting sometimes than physical exhaustion and energy. And we are feeling it in so many different ways. So back to my earlier rant, the moon in that cancer energy is going to be the pivot point. When the moon moves into Leo energy, a fixed fire sign, First of all, we stabilize in our emotion in a fixed energy and that fire sign of Leo, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, returns us to our realest, most authentic selves. This is when there is a new spark, new fire, new flame being triggered and activated within us that needs to be fully expressed through the physical body, through the physical avatar, through the egoic programming that we are essentially recalibrating at this time in order to pivot away from what it is that we had been doing and onto a path that is going to be much more in alignment with our higher selves. So the moon is definitely carrying us through cancer season as the moon is in his rulership or her rulership, should I say, in cancer season. So we have to pay special attention to what the moon is doing. Okay, so the waves of emotion are going to continue to crash upon us. But again, as we reach that new moon in Cancer at the 14th degree, we are going to move away from crying over spilled milk of the past, crying over situations that didn't go the way that we wanted them to, circumstances that we wish we weren't dealing with. Okay, we're going to boss up from that. We've been in this what I like to call infant stage of the inner child crying over how unfair life is, crying over the pain, the hurt that, you know, this whole life earthly experience has created. Essentially, when we move in that new moon window at a 14 degree, we start pulling away from the whining, crying, infantile stage of taking a good look at our emotional realm in our lives and whining and crying about it and we become very present. There is an acceptance, a finality, a closure that will be taking place around that new moon in Cancer. And in turn, we start to pivot. We start to think about what we could do for ourselves, how we can build ourselves up, how we can strengthen our inner realm, how we can kind of build new self-esteem, new confidence, how we can build a new foundation of self, what it is that we have to do, what we have to pursue in our physical realm in order to get us away from what it is that we know we no longer want to experience and closer to some of the things that our higher self needs us to do, needs us to pursue, needs us to fulfill in order for us to complete our karmic contract. That is going to be the pivot point. 
But let's talk about being in the middle of the ocean with all of these waves crashing upon us. Yes, there's a certain level of exhaustion. Like I said, emotional exhaustion is sometimes way stronger than physical exhaustion. I feel like we're kind of feeling both right now. I think we're very low on life force energy. Um, Reminder, we are one season away from Leo season. The sun is in his rulership in Leo season. The sun is our life force energy and our full expression of our soul and spirit being animated through the physical form of this ego avatar, which means that essentially we are at the lowest life force energy that we could possibly have. We're going to be popping once the sun moves into Leo energy, but we're not there yet. We're exhausted. We're being beat down, broken down in order for a breakthrough to happen. But that breakthrough energy isn't coming until the sun moves into Leo energy. So yes, there's an exhaustion. You would think that that would mean that we would have a good sleep at night. I don't know about y'all, but the sleep is still very much something that I would love to have more, I'm going to say, consistency in. Um, Definitely sleeping better this week compared to last week. However, it's still not legit. It's hard to wake up in the morning. It's hard to get going. We're not having full nights of sleep. The dream content, the astral realm is very conflicting, very tension filled. It's bringing up a lot of emotions even in our dream state. Why? Because this is a karmic chapter that we have to kind of reconcile, that we have to bring a closure to before we can bring new life to the scene. And again, new life sun in leo that is the new life that is the spark the fire the flame that we're currently lacking there's too much water in the cosmos right now it's snuffing out our passion snuffing out our excitement snuffing out our inspiration our motivation our want need and desire to even be here and exist this is not for the faint of heart okay we're spiritual warriors this is why we're going through the ascension process and trust me when i say It does not get easier. Now, should that depress you? No, it shouldn't. You signed up for a contract to be a warrior on the earth plane at a time of a spiritual awakening. So why would you expect that the battlefield is going to get easier? It is not. However, it is going to become easier to deal with Because we know that we have to rise up in the face of a challenge. We have new roles and responsibilities that we have to boss up into. We have new chapters that we need to initiate. May I remind you, we're in the year of eight. Power and control over one's mind, over one's emotions, over one's action in order for us to tap into our creative energies. We are essentially being prepped and primed for 2025 when Saturn and Neptune are both going to move into Aries energy together and we get a clean, fresh slate for us to be building this new realm and reality upon. But what happens before a beginning? An ending is needed. This is the transitional ending that is needed. This is the tough love life lesson to prove to us how strong we actually are. This is us being prepped and primed for a totally different battlefield that we will be entering into when Saturn and Neptune enter into that Aries energy early 2025. We still have some work to do. I want to talk about the fact that, yes, we're out in the middle of the ocean. We're gaining a lot of, I'm going to call it, uh, well, probably negative perspective at this particular point in time. We're not hopeful. We're not wishful. We literally feel like we're going to die out here. Our legs are getting tired from treading water. We are tired of choking on water. There is snot coming out of our nose. We are coughing up water and phlegm. May I remind you that again, this analogy is connected to the energy that we are going through right now in our physical body. So there is snot coming out of mysterious places in our nose that doesn't even look like snot. There are coughing fits, whether we're choking on air, food, water, words, doesn't matter. We're choking on something. There is an overabundance of phlegm. Phlegm coming up out of our bodies, out of our lungs and out of our sinuses is the energetic blockage that is preventing the energy from moving freely through the meridian channels of your physical body. So cough it up, spit it out, get the snot out of your head. We have to clear these particular meridian lines. 
Now, of course, choking on air and choking on spit and choking on words and food is never fun. But if that is an indicator that we are not in alignment with our breathing, then this is going to be a key indicator that we're out in the middle of the ocean, we're gaining in exhaustion, we're tired of treading water, we are emotional wrecks at this time. So what do we need to do? What do we have to focus on? Our breath work. We have to remain calm. We have to remain breathing in a very methodical way in order for as much oxygen to infiltrate every cell of our being because when you are shallow breather, when you are not breathing properly, you are depriving yourself of the oxygen needed in order to think clearly. Many of us are shallow breathers on a regular. You have no control over anything in your life except for your breath. Okay, it starts with the breath. You don't even have control over the way that you react or respond to the world around you if you're not breathing correctly. So, yes, the waves are coming at us. Yes, it's getting absolutely exhausting. But trust the process and lean into your breath work. It is going to change the game for you. There is this awkward, loud kind of silence that we're experiencing being out in the middle of the ocean. It's almost as if we don't really want to talk. We're very introverted in this cancer energy. Again, Mercury and cancer as well. We're not really chatty Cathy's. We're very introverted. We're very kind of reflective at this point. But the silence is getting louder and louder and louder. And it is a very weird sensation to be craving silence, but yet almost fear silence because the, let's call it, uh, I'm going to call it volume, of the silence is getting very eerily loud. It makes no sense. It's oxymoronic in its finest, finest hour. But what we're getting here is to a point where we are willing to sit in that loud silence in order to truly understand what it is that we need to do to find our middle ground again. Again, silence of the mind, silence of the emotion, silence of the physical realm allows us to move inward, to get that breath work regulated, to get that oxygen in our bodies, to get a different perspective going in our mental plane and in our emotional field. There are solutions being offered to us this week that are going to fix, resolve, see, really solve a lot of the issues that we've been banging our head against the wall about. And so we just need to continue to do the work, to breathe, to continue to tread water, to continue to find that peace, that serenity in this loud silence until solutions arrive. Now, yes, it is very hard on the head to be stranded out in the middle of the ocean and have these emotional waves crash upon us and have us kind of, you know, review our lives and really kind of question our mortality at particular junctures of our experience. But let me also just say there's a very heavy mental loop taking place in our mental plane right now. Mercury is in cancer energy. The cancer energy has this tendency to look back. What could I have done differently? Trying to make sense of situations that will never intellectually make sense because it is a metaphysical spiritual lesson that cannot be put into words. There is this looping pattern in behavior. There is this, I'm gonna say, fixation on thinking about the past and trying to essentially figure out where quote unquote things went wrong. Things didn't go wrong. Things are happening exactly as they should. They may not be favorable to your egoic programming, but they're 100% in alignment to your higher self. You have to remind yourself of that. Nothing is a loss. You cannot lose anything that is meant for you. Anything that you've gained is only temporary here in this physical realm and can be removed out of your particular path when you refuse to remove it yourself. A lot of the people that are going through hardships right now, especially relationship falling apart, are perceiving that as an ending, as a failure, as a loss. It is none of those things. It was merely time to wrap up a karmic cycle, merely time to kind of wrap up a particular tough love life lesson that is very imperative for this next chapter of your life. Again, for those of you that have found yourself in relationships that are falling apart, how can you expect to meet your divine match when you're holding on to toxicity? Okay, 
If this person was good for you, they would still be around. If this person was part of your higher self, soul's plan, they would still be here. Nothing that is being removed out of your life is a punishment, is a loss. You have to flip the mental script. Okay, so let's talk about being in water. You know how you get shriveled up in your fingers? It's weird because we're retaining water weight. We can see that in our face. We can see that in our bellies. We can see that in our fingers, but our fingers are going to shrivel. It doesn't matter how hot your environment is. You are going to be erring on the side of being cold. Again, if you were in the middle of the ocean and let's say you're in the middle of the ocean in a very warm place, yeah, the air might be warm, but that ocean is very cold. Our body temperatures are dropping. Cold energy, cold presence is keeping us very aware of this present moment. Again, cancer energy is so strongly connected to the past that it's hard to be present while you're being kind of pulled back into the things that, again, are very much over. But that cold energy, that cold temperature in our physical form is trying to give us some sort of presence. It is going to really put us in a situation once the sun moves into Leo and heats the whole world up from the inside out where we're going to appreciate the cold in which we were sitting in through cancer season. But we have dry lips. Our eyes are burning. We're shriveling up. We're cold. We're tired. All of the things that you would expect while being out in the middle of the ocean. How is it, though, that we can be submerged in water and have all of these water influences, but yet still have a highly oily skin? The amount of facial breakouts, acne breakouts, rashes, bumps kind of reaching the surface of our skin at this time is an indication of an inner healing. Does it feel good? 100% no, but it is a good indicator. Same with that itch that you can't actually scratch. It is an indicator that something in us is changing, something in us is evolving, something in us is healing. But yes, it is hard to kind of wrap your head around because a lot of these things that indicate that there is a positive change don't feel good. Let's talk about the fact that what also doesn't feel good is the bathroom breaks. Now, again, TMI, humans are disgusting things. We know this. But let me just put it to you this way. Many of us are going to experience some painful bowel movements this week. Why? Well, because the cancer energy, because we're so connected to the past, because we're so connected with looking back, we have a hard time letting shit go. Literally speaking and figuratively speaking, we have a hard time letting shit go. That's as far as I'm going to take that particular ascension symptom. But be warned, your bathroom situation is going to be a challenge at some point for you this week, especially around that new moon energy. Now, we are going through a lot of change. We are going through a lot of transition. The struggle is very real, which means that the lower back that root chakra is going to just be pulsating. That is our survival programming. And I don't know about y'all, but if you were stranded out in the middle of the ocean with no land or no ship or no savior in sight, we are going to be struggling with our survival. And so there is this pressure, there is this influence on the base of our root chakra in our lower back at the base of our spine that is going to be very noticeable. Now, is it going to feel good? 100%? No. Is it supposed to? Absolutely not. But it is a good indicator that we are essentially changing the perspective, changing the programming of who it is that we are, what it is that we think we're capable of, and what it is that we want to do and pursue from here. It is going to be highly felt, though. You may even feel it kind of stemming down into your hips, maybe some shooting pains into the leg area. Our legs, because we're treading water, feel like sea legs. We're not stable on them. They don't feel safe and secure. We aren't really, I'm going to say, trusting our footing at this particular juncture. And because of that, again, the pain, the tremors, the muscle spasms, all of these things are definitely going to radiate from the lower back down. Down. So you may be out here in the middle of the ocean wondering what the hell is life? How did we get here? What is this supposed to be doing to us? 
What am I supposed to be learning from this? How am I repeating patterns and behaviors from the past? This again, karmically speaking, is putting us in a situation to reframe our pain and trauma story. If we continue to sit around crying about what could have been, then we are only kind of furthering the victimhood mentality. We are not in a time or in a place for that. We are at the particular juncture where we need to be bossing up. We need to be flipping the script. We need to be healing the wounds that are still very alive and well within us. So you may be out in the middle of the ocean. You may be questioning what is life, but essentially speaking, it is to break you down, to make you in your most vulnerable state, be open to change that you weren't open to this time last month, this time last year, this time 12 freaking years ago, okay? There are multiple chapters overlapping. There are multiple timelines overlapping. There are multiple soul contracts overlapping at this time. And a lot of, a lot of it feels eerily familiar. This does not mean that you didn't learn your lesson. This does not mean that you're a failure. What this means is that you're taking on a new perspective of how life is in a cyclic nature, trying to constantly put you in familiar situations in order for you to choose differently. That's what all of this is about. So we did talk about the itchiness. And again, pay attention to where the itchiness is coming up for you, where you find that taking place in your body is definitely going to be a key indicator of the part in which you are currently healing. But I'm going to I'm going to speak out here for a second. Now, it could be because we're all going to be having some sort of painful bowel movements that we are going to have these particular symptoms as well. And I'm not saying that, you know, the men of the world aren't going to have some sort of similar experience. However, we are in cancer season that is ruled over by the mother feminine energy. We are also in a season that is ruled over by the moon. And, you know, if you got those lady parts, you would know that that time of the month usually aligns with a new moon or with a full moon. And that could be very indicative of where it is that you're at in your feminine healing journey. Now, whether you are the type that has lady parts or not, doesn't matter. There's going to be some sort of cramping. Now, to my females out there, it's going to feel like period cramps. Again, you are the womb that all creation stems from. To my masculine parts out there, you're going to have cramps in some sort of way. Now, I don't have those particular parts, so I don't know if y'all are kind of, you know, typically used to having, you know, stabbing pains and crampy feelings in your, your man junk, but... There is going to be some sort of tension in those lower reproductive organs. Again, where we're coming from is ending. Where we're going to is beginning. And that is the cycle of life. And the energy that we are currently experiencing out in the cosmos is trying to teach us the very basic lessons of life. There has to be an ending in order for a beginning. There has to be a death in order for a birth. There has to be the cyclic nature of renewal. And that's where we're at. So we may come out of a broken family, but that doesn't mean that a broken family has to come out of us. Okay. And this is the cyclic nature of recognizing the cramping in our reproductive organs to say to us, what do we need to bring to life? What needs to die in our lives in order for us to have the energy, the space in order to bring new things into fruition. So whichever way you look at it, doesn't matter, you know, what your body type is like, what part you're working with, there's going to be some sort of discomfort, some sort of cramping in the lower part of our reproductive system. Again, lower back programming, the survival programming overlapping with the tough love life lessons of death endings and closures in order for a new life cycle to actually begin we are the creators of our reality we can give birth regardless of what parts you're working with we can give birth create something new at any time but systems structures contracts aspects of the old life of the old realm of the old identity have to come to a finality have to come to a completion point before we have the space to give birth to something new 
So guys, that is my list of things to talk about here this week. I think it gives us plenty to be aware of. I think it gives us a focal point of some of the tough love life lessons that we are going to be thrown into, especially in the early days of July. Um, we still have a lot to unpack. We still have a lot to learn. We still have a lot of wading through the waves in the water in order for us to actually get to that ending point of cancer season. And just a reminder, that final hurrah at the end of cancer season, which again, we're still only at this midpoint with the new moon in cancer at 14 degrees, that's the halfway point, right? So we still have a couple of weeks of cancer season to go. But let me just remind you that we had a full moon in Capricorn at a one degree to kick cancer season off. We have a full moon in Capricorn at a 29 critical crisis karmic degree to close cancer season and push us into this new fire, new spark, new flame, new identity, new want, new need, new desire for life when the sun moves into his rulership in that Leo energy. We're not there yet. We still have some work to do but we're going to get through this together. So I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for being here in the live chat. I thank you for the love and support. I thank you for showing up for me, but mostly I thank you for doing the work and for showing up for yourself. I'm sending you nothing but love. We'll talk to you soon.